Hello, my name is Peter and welcome to 8-Bits in the Basement. So today's system that I'd like to show you is this here. It's a 48K ZX Spectrum clone and it came all the way from Russia. This was designed in 1987 by a guy named Sergei Zonov and uh, he was living in Leningrad at the time. And he designed this system, this board, and uh, it became known in Leningrad as the Zonovsky variant. Or the zone. All the rest of Russia called it the Leningrad and it's actually a very well-known clone because it was really the very first clone and an awful lot of people in Russia had this one because it was very easy to build and uh, it was also very easy to get work and to repair and whatever. It was a very very simple circuit design and I found this from a Russian vendor. He was selling kits of um, various different types of uh, Spectrum clones. I'll leave a link in the description to his store. And if this kind of thing interests you, you can have a look and see what he has to offer. But um, I took this Leningrad clone that he had on sale. So it came a PCB and all of the various chips and resistors and capacitors and diodes and whatnot that were needed. But uh, there wasn't any sockets provided and the keyboard wasn't provided either. There weren't any of these connectors I, I have at the back, nor a speaker. So um, it was just it was just basically the ICs and the components that were needed. So having removed the case and having a look at the PCB, you'll see that it in no way resembles a 48K ZX Spectrum. Um, and that's, well, it's for a number of different reasons, but uh, the 48K Spectrum had what was called a ULA chip. It was a chip on the inside that was custom made and uh, it did the job of many other chips. What they've done here, because they had no way of actually making a ULA chip, is they have used TTL logic chips in order to try and mimic or to emulate the ULA. And you'll see all those chips kind of dotted around the board here. Um, so those are what would be a, a, an equivalent chip for the Western world would be the 74 series of logic chips. Uh, these are all Russian marked and Russian made chips. Um, what else is on this board is there are eight, eight kilobyte RAM chips. So that gives us a total of 64 kilobytes of RAM, but actually only 48K of RAM is used. And that's to maintain compatibility with the Spectrum 48K. Here you find the, um, the processor chip. So it is a Zilog Z80 normally. What I have in here is a Sharp Z80. So it's the same thing, running at three and a half megahertz. Uh, alongside here, in this particular configuration, what they've done is they've used two eight kilobyte ROM chips. Now the Spectrum itself has a 16 kilobyte ROM. And this is a direct copy of the Spectrum ROM. So there was no copyright and there was no anything. It was just, it was just taken and used. But in this case, they've split the ROM in two and programmed it across two chips. And uh, this is what they call a stitched configuration because they've taken two chips and they're melded together on the board to give us a 16K ROM. Um, on top of that, there was one other thing that they, um, that they integrated into the board that the Spectrum didn't have. And that was a Kempston joystick port. Now, you, you, you know for the Spectrum, there's an edge connector, which this board you'll see doesn't have. And into that you could plug all types of peripherals and one of which was a Kempston joystick adapter. So they decided what to do here was they'd stick a Kempston joystick port onto the board and you could wire it directly to a, to a nine pin din header and plug in your joystick, which was a great idea. But unfortunately it wasn't very well implemented. And what you end up with is a joystick that isn't actually compatible with anything. So. Um, it's not really usable on this board, their, um, their implementation of the Kempston joystick, although that was corrected in the Leningrad 2, which was a later version of this board that came out that had many extra little features. Um, another thing about this board that's better than the Spectrum in one way and in another way wasn't really implemented fantastically for today is that this doesn't have an RF modulator, so it doesn't put out a TV signal that you can tune in on your TV. It is, however, using red, green, blue SCART, which is which is excellent, or not necessarily SCART, but red, green, and blue with horizontal sync. So um, it can be plugged into a monitor, it can be plugged into a SCART socket, into a TV, into whichever way you wish. But um, back in 1987, when this was designed, 
Russian television set, sets could take pretty much any kind of a signal and display it on screen. Nowadays, however, that isn't the case. Now, the PAL standard for a horizontal sync uh, calls for 4.7 microseconds. A horizontal sync rate of 4.7 microseconds. This guy has a horizontal sync rate of a little more than 13 microseconds, so it's not at all compatible. What it does is it gives you a flashing image on screen. So there is actually a uh, fix for that that um, uses a little IC to change the timings and um, it fixes up that and you get a nice, a nice signal on screen. Now what this is really is, it's a nice little kit that you can build using mainly true hold components. Now there is one SMD component here for this little um, video controller I suppose chip. But uh, that's the only SMD component, so there's there's a little bit of a challenge in that. But apart from that, the rest of the board is pretty much straightforward. Now I have to say I learned an awful lot from building this board, because um, once I had it built, I assume it was working perfectly, but I didn't realize that. Uh, there was number one, there was the TV um, output thing, like I say. I didn't know about that. I had to search around on the internet and then I needed to get one little chip in order to fix that up. And once that was fixed up, I still had problems because, well, it's obvious to nearly anybody who does this kind of thing. But to me at the time, I didn't know about voltage drop. So I was powering this from a 2 amp, um, from a 5 volt 2 amp phone charger, which is more than adequate normally but uh, I was getting voltage drops so what was happening was my 5 volts going in was actually only like 4.3 volts across all the ICs on um, on the board so there wasn't enough power there to get it working so what I had was I had an image on screen but uh, it wasn't the image I should have and uh, it took me a little while to figure that out because um, well, I wouldn't be the brightest in the world. But anyway, uh, once I had that figured out, what I did was I got myself a little buck converter and I plugged it into that and I could up the voltage until I had my five volts that I needed. And uh, the system worked quite well. So um, that is pretty much this system. Uh, apart from the keyboard, of course, because the keyboard like I say, didn't come with um, with this kit that I bought. I, I had to buy the keyboard separately. So uh, what this is, is this is a replacement keyboard, keyboard for ZX Spectrum for 48K. And uh, it came with this little um, overlay. And it's just a PCB with, uh, with these little push buttons on them. So it makes it that little better than those rubber keys that the, the ZX Spectrum came with originally. But, um, the system itself, uh, it it has its keyboard connector here. I wired them in directly, and um, I also wired on a DB a DB nine port for a joystick using um, the keys six, seven, eight, nine, and ten as up, down, left, right, and fire because that's actually the way a Sinclair joystick works. So in many games, I can select Sinclair joystick and control using the joystick that way. Now, um, as regards compatibility, there are a lot of games and a lot of software and all that that works perfectly on this. You can't tell that it's a clone. You think it was a Spectrum that you were using. There are other games like uh, Short Circuit is an example, Cobra, Back to the Future, um, Arkanoid as well is a, is a great example that don't work on this. They, they just pretty much hang as soon as, um, as, soon as, as you start, uh, as soon as it's loaded up and you try to play it. Um, but that being said, for I suppose the challenge of putting it together yourself and getting it to work, uh, I, found it to be, I found it to be an excellent little system and I come back to it again and again and again. Um, now, I'll tell you, the kit itself cost me about 55 euro, including postage. The keyboard I had to buy separate, that cost me another 25 euro, including postage. So already we're up to a good kind of 80 euro 
and then you could add in I suppose maybe another five or ten euro for various different ports and buttons and connectors and that kind of thing so realistically speaking I could have bought a Spectrum 48k and just had that but really where be the fun in that this guy took me <laughs> took me the best part of three months to get working from when I took it out of its bag and started soldering it together until I got it actually working. It took me the best part of three months. And um, I learned an awful lot along the way. Uh, it came with, like I say, everything I needed with the exception of the speaker and a few connectors and all that. But it also came with all the schematics um, for the board as well. And I mean, between trying to get it to work and trying to make it and pouring over these things, if you're into this kind of thing, I would recommend it because I I passed many, many, many uh, a happy hour, we'll say, playing around with this, trying to get it to work. But that was just me geeking out on this immensely. There's an awful lot of upgrades that can be done on this board too. And that's another thing. That's another reason why I'm showing this is because um, I built it, like I say, in mid-2018. And um, since then, I've been using away on it up and down. And it's compatible as compatible goes. But um, what can be done on this quite easily is it can be upgraded to 128 kilobytes of RAM. That can be done. And also an AY sound chip can be added to it. So it pretty much makes it like a not very compatible um, Spectrum Plus 2. Then if you wish to, on a separate piece of breadboard, uh, you can build a floppy drive controller and connecting a three and a half inch floppy disk drive to this, giving you a not very compatible plus three. I, you could even, if you really wanted to go, I mean, really old school, you could get yourself a piece of breadboard, get yourself the chips and put it all together on the breadboard, wiring everything together by hand. And it has been done. People have done it that way back in the day, back in Russia, they've put them together that way and they're working to this day. So that can be done. This is a thing you could bring in for under 20 euro. Even the keyboards were back in Russia built uh, by hand using pieces of wood. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's actually, it's an amazing piece of history when, when you look and you see People in Russia that at the time they had very, very little, but um, they wanted they wanted their home computers. They wanted to be fooling around with this stuff, to be programming and all the rest. And they managed with very little to do so, so much. So um, it's 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 a testament to that time. Um, and that, I suppose, is is why I am um, I, I, I like this. I like the whole history behind this. And like I say, there are many more, much more compatible versions of a uh, clone that were made even afterwards. Uh, talk of the Scorpion, which has four megabytes of RAM in it and a processor run at seven megahertz, I think. And it, it, it's like when, when Western Europe went on to 16 bit systems with the Sega Mega Drive and the, um, the, Amiga and all that kind of thing. The Russian guys stayed with their 8-bit system and just made it, brought it to where it could go at the very maximum. So, um, no, it's, 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 it's an amazing little story. But this, this guy here was the very first, the very first clone. Uh, well, not this particular one. This is fairly recent. But, I mean, this Leningrad 1 design was the very first clone. Um, of a 48k spectrum and um yeah this is this so what i will do in a part two of this video is i will show you it working i'm going to plug it into the tv and i will run there's a number of tests that were available for the 48k spectrum we'll run those on it see how it compares test wise and um, i load up a few games we'll have a look at those we'll tap in a program or two see how that works i'll just show you general look on the screen and a little down the road because what I intend to do is I intend to do those upgrades like I've seen at least the 128k upgrade and the AY sound upgrade and we may well try building that little um, 
controller board for your disk drive and see if we can integrate a five and a half inch disk drive into it just just for the hell of it so uh yeah i leave this video here at this because i think it's got more than long enough and i'm after ranting on for more than long enough as well and uh what i'll do is i'll sign off and say until next time like subscribe don't like don't subscribe leave a comment or don't leave a comment but it'd be nice if you did and we'll talk to you in the next episode so take care of yourselves until then and we'll see you in the basement